21st Century Radio is sponsored by Hieronymus and Company. This is Talk Radio 680 WCBM. It's time now for award-winning 21st Century Radio. Here's your host, Dr. Bob Hieronymus. One world, one world, one mind, one one love, we will find on common ground, peace will be found found for all on earth. earth. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Hieronymus. Our executive producer and research assistant, Laura Cortner. Our engineer is Anita Brockington. Before we introduce our guest tonight, talking about clairvoyance, telepathy, and precognition, here's what happened to me last week. On November the 27th, Maryland Court of Appeals Chief Judge Mary Ellen Barbera and Mayor Catherine E. Pugh jointly unveiled a new jury assembly room at the Clarence Mitchell Courthouse in downtown Baltimore. As part of the ceremonies, my 1976 mural, entitled Historic Views of Baltimore, was rededicated in its new home of this jury room, and I was presented with a plaque by the Mayor of Recognition for my 50 years of service to the community through the arts. Well, thanks to all for making this happen, especially Jackson Gilman Forlini and the City Department of General Services, Ryan Patterson of the Baltimore Office of Promotion of the Arts, Melissa Monroe, the Jury Commissioner for Baltimore, the Baltimore City Circuit Court, the Honorable W. Michelle Pearson, Administrative Judge, Baltimore City Kirk Circuit Court, Steve Sharkey, Director of General Services, also my supporters in the bar library at the courthouse who originally suggested this move, Joe Bennett and Rob Hendrickson. I also want to thank particularly the American Visionary Museum and especially George Geary for the tremendous help in creating the frame and plexiglass protective covering, which he installed with beautiful skill and to protect, as also, by the way, the founder, Rebecca Meyerhoff, Excuse me, Rebecca Hofberger, for agreeing to preserve and protect this mural. For the past three years, as we uh, negotiated this new location, thank you also, artist Casey Jones, who helped me clean up and restore the mural before it was hung on display at the American Visionary Art Museum in 2014. And I can't forget my great friend, the talented Mr. Stuart Zolotoro, who was kind enough to grace us with his camera at the mural unveiling last Tuesday. We have posted some of his terrific shots on our Facebook page, along with the mayor's proclamation, which is, in my opinion, was, well, just too good to be true. As a matter of fact, it's so good, I'm going to read it to you. To Robert Hieronymus. In recognition of your significant contributions to improving the collective mind, body, and spirit of Baltimore through the transcendent experience of art. Your murals are found throughout the city from Lexington Market to the neighborhoods of Waverly and Station North to the Johns Hopkins University Homeland Camp Campus on the occasion of the re- rededication of your 1976 mural Historic Views of Baltimore here at the Clarence Mitchell Courthouse. We honor you for your more than 50 years of creating public art in Baltimore. Well, our guests for tonight's show are Tarie, see if I get this correct. Is that correct almost? Yes, Tar- Tarie Simonson. And a uh, PhD is a Norwegian author and historian of ideas specializing in the esoteric and the cult. He has taught at the University of Oslo and works today as a freelance writer. Also, Bruce Olav Solheim was born in Seattle to Norwegian immigrant parents, including a psychic mother who introduced him to the magical realm. He earned his Ph.D. in history from Bowling Green State University in 1993 and is currently a distinguished professor of history at Citrus College in Glendora, California, where he teaches a paranormal personal history course one of only six colleges in the United States that offer a paranormal course. We're talking to a couple of 
para Norwegians tonight. These are two friends and colleagues who have written similarly themed books, but tonight we'll be focusing exclusively on one of them. It's called Our Secret Powers, Telepathy, Clairvoyance, and Precognition, a short history of nearly everything paranormal, published in Italy by Parry Press, excuse me, Parry Publishing, earlier this year. About this book, my dear friend, Dr. Stanley Krippner, who was my doctoral committee chairman back in the old days, said the following, An outstanding book, and it deserves all the attention it can get. Not only is Our Secret Powers a book for all seasons, it is a book for all reasons. Good going there, brother Dr. Stanley Krippner, professor of psychology at my alma mater, Saybrook University. Well, welcome to 21st Century Radio Terrier and Bruce. Hello, Bob. Who do I have here? Terrier? Terrier? That is uh, Terrier trying to speak English. Okay. And and this is Bruce. And and this is Bruce. Welcome to yes. 21st Century Radio, Thank folks. You. Uh, let's, Thank you. Terrier, let's start with you, and we're going to go back and forth on this, okay? What Great. is your background uh, in personal and study-wise? Well, personally, uh, I was born in Kristiansand, which is a town south in uh, in Mandel, uh, south, south in Norway, uh, in 1963, and I lived there for uh, first years in my life, and then we moved to France because my father was studying biology with a quite famous French professor, and uh, then we went back, and uh, I have lived in Norway uh, ever since that, and. Uh, I uh, studied uh, philosophy and uh, religion and also history of theos at the University of Oslo and uh, wrote my thesis about uh, uh, Rudolf Steiner and, and uh, oh. anthroposophy. Yes. Your yeah. thesis was on Dr. Rudolf Steiner? We oh, yeah, have parts of his work. Uh, you know, uh, it has uh, meant uh, quite a lot for Norwegian intellectual uh, milieus, uh, oh. his work. and. Uh, uh, the journal that introduced that was uh, made by a Norwegian writer called Alf Larsen, and I wrote uh, about that journal because it was so central in uh, introducing uh, Steiner's thoughts to uh, Norwegian uh, public life. Wow. Uh, I have the highest regard for for him. Uh, he's an extraordinary, extraordinary soul. Uh, what, what, oh, about, yeah. what about you, Bruce? What, what, tell us a little bit about your background and personal study-wise. Yeah, my uh, my parents are from uh, Norway, northern Norway. They immigrated after World War II, 1948. And uh, my brother and I were born in, in Seattle. My sister was born in, in Norway as well. So I grew up with both cultures, both languages, traveled to Norway many times. Uh, I got a Ph.D. in history from Bowling Green State University. I served six years in the U.S. Army. I've been teaching for 21 years at Citrus College, and just recently did I start talking openly about uh, my paranormal experiences and, and um, gifts that I've had since I was four years old, and uh, that I got, I think, through my mother. So, mm-hmm. so this is a, uh, uh, something I've been experiencing my whole life, but uh, have just, just recently you know, written about it and... Uh, it's pretty well received in, at the college and with my peers, and uh, actually the college allowed me to teach a course, so that tells you something. Well, certainly, yeah, especially in this particular area here. Uh, Terry, uh, when did you first become interested in the paranormal? Well, you know, I had some experience when I was uh, a boy, uh, not perhaps as strong as Bruce, but, you know, uh, during a conversation I would... Uh, sometimes know beforehand what people were was going uh, were going to say in the next moment, and not just a general idea, but you know the, the uh, specific wording and so. And it puzzled me. How could I knew that? Be- uh, know that because I uh, I <laughs> they hadn't said it yet, and uh, that puzzled me. And also, I was a member in a Christian youth club, and there was some kind of small miracles, or what you, you can call it, taking place there. Uh, before going on, I just have to excuse to the listener my English because uh, English is not my first language. So I well, will. You, you sound great. Okay, you s- thank you, Bob. Terry, yeah, you uh, do. Well, you yeah. sound great. You, you, you know, uh, you know, hey, I, I, which I had a voice yeah. like you did. But, okay. 
well, then I was in this Christian youth club, and and uh, there were some trusted friends telling me about strange stories. You know, uh, sick people had been prayed for, and uh, and you know they had become well after that. Uh, and uh, at that time, we thought of it as. Uh, uh, God's direct, uh, you know, uh, action, which of course it could have been, but uh, in parapsychology, of course, you see this as a kind of energy healing, a part of, uh, say, uh, natural ability. If you develop spiritually, you, you, you everybody can do that uh, kind of things, and uh, also uh, telepathic experiences. Uh, for instance, at that time, this was uh, long before the mobile phone was invented. Uh, friend of mine wanted to go to the U.S., and she needed uh, about $1,000 for a ticket, and uh, she didn't have the, those $1,000, so she prayed, and suddenly there came a check for exactly $1,000 uh, in the mail for her, and there was uh, her brother living in Indonesia, just he had felt he needed to send her this check, you know, without her having communicated directly to him uh, her need, you know. Lots of kind of that stories, uh, both in my own experience and, and close friends, you know. And I, I felt that there is going something on behind the scenes, uh, and I wanted to really to find out what is what uh, what it is. Well, really, something is going on behind the scenes right now, as I'm just thinking that we have two para-Norwegians on, and I just had my DNA tested, and where were 83% of my... Uh, genes from it was from that region. This is <laughs> this is very peculiar. I yeah. mean, you uh, talk uh, you <laughs> talk about karma. I mean, well, we agreed we, we agreed on this radio show in the former life. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, okay. It's a, it's a, you know. For, oh, gosh, Rudy Rudolf Steiner, and then we're finding out all about this DNA and all everyone being from the same area. Uh, so yeah. We must have known each other in other lifetimes, in my opinion, from that standpoint. Well, I don't think you bump into too many people that you, you haven't met before. Uh, th that's my bias, anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Thare, uh, you have had paranormal experiences yourself. You did mention a few of them, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I also had uh, quite a lot of... Uh what is called sandremt uh, in Norwegian, when you dream about the future and uh, the dreams come true. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I could woke, uh, wake up in the morning, I, I will see some uh, special... Uh, well, I'm taking an example, there was a friend of mine I'm going to school together with, and I've not seen for, uh, seen him for five years, not heard anything from five years, didn't know where he was living really, and so. And suddenly, I, uh, one morning, I just stopped thinking about him, and not just thinking, you know, it was kind of, uh, I more or less saw his picture in the air about one meter in front of me. And I didn't get him out of my head. For the next two hours, I was thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking, you know, like an obsession. Mm -hmm. And uh, some uh, some hours later, uh, after five years and no contact at all, I met this friend uh, by coincidence, you know. So that kind of things. I, I, I get glimpses of the future before it happens. So that has happened quite often. I could give you also more dramatic examples, but that is kind of trivial stuff, yes. So, Tarje, you've been involved in this for many decades, haven't you? Well, uh, as an interested observer, I have, uh, because uh, in, in this Christian community, they were quite open to that phenomenon. Oh, uh, and also, when I would become older and moved to, to Oslo to study, I, I was interested and in, uh, went to see uh, some professional psychics and so on. Uh, but, uh, my, say, my intellectual... Uh, a pursuit of, of these phenomena uh, started, I think, uh, about 10 years ago when I wanted to really go deep into it because oh. I studied at the university. I studied, as I said, Rudolf Steiner and also Hermitism and uh, uh, Christian mysticism and all that kind of traditions, mm -hmm. uh, intellectual traditions where those phenomena are, are, you know, taken for granted more or less. But I did not go into parapsychology before about 10 years ago. And then I also started to to more structurally interview uh, people uh, having those gifts, uh, professional psychics. Uh, I, I think I must have interviewed about 80 uh, persons from uh, Norway, from Canada, from Jamaica, from the U.S., and uh, yeah, from around the world, really. Well, Bruce, how, how, long, how long has it been uh, since you've got been involved in this particular area? How many decades? Well, I, yeah, I, well, I'm 60 now, and I had my first... Uh, paranormal experience that I remember. It was an angelic experience in northern Norway when we were living with my grandmother for nine months. It was an angelic experience. Uh, so that was at age four. And then I've had them uh, frequently and randomly 
since then throughout my life, including precognition, like Terry was talking about, uh, telepathy, telekinesis, uh, I, you know, like these angelic experiences. I've also had the more negative stuff, too, uh, the demonic stuff. Um, so th that's been going on for a very long time. I did take a, uh, a parapsychology course in 1980 when I was stationed in West Germany in Mannheim, and uh, it was taught by a, uh, <clears throat> a man named Christopher Mooney, and uh, he was a doctor of divinity, and there was a psychologist who also taught alongside him who was a skeptic. So it was kind of a, a, a it was a really interesting course because you bet. had a believer yeah. and a skeptic. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, so I, that's when I took kind of an academic interest in it and after having all had all these experiences. So I've always meant to want to write about my experiences, but felt like it was it was never really the time until about two years ago when I started writing my recent book. Retarier, uh tell us why you wrote this book, Secret Powers. Well, Our uh, Secret it, Powers. It was, this, was this a long time interest? Uh, for many years, I have been so fascinated by by this, and you know, people sitting in another place in another town, and uh, I can ask about, say, close family or friends, and uh, that uh, psychic uh, would be able to to to, to tell me uh, about uh, lots of biographical stuff. Uh, but uh, very specifically, that was a kind of experience I had with an uh, old guy from, uh, what, I think they call them travelers, uh, uh, kind of Roma people, you know. Uh, he was from, from that uh, background. And uh, I was going to a date uh, in Norway. Uh, and uh, I asked him about, oh, how is this date going to, to go? And uh, he said, oh, yes, he likes you quite a lot. And uh, that would be very nice. And uh, then he said, and I can tell you, this lady is one meter and 64 centimeters tall. And I said, huh? How, how can he know that? Uh, I didn't know because I had not met her in in any kind of uh, familiar or private uh, uh, occasion before. So, but we went to the state and it became very nice. And so I saw, and I, of course I was uh, curious. So during the evening I asked her, uh, by the way, how tall are you? And then she said, one meter and 64 <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was floored, you know. How is that possible? And uh, I called uh, this guy the next day and said, I'm so impressed. How is this working? And he said, it's about like when you uh, put in a search word in Google, and and then uh, there came lo come a lot of information. So when I asked about her, it came a lot of information, and it could be her father's occupation or the color of the hair of her brother or so. But uh, what came through to him? which he did not control. He was not able to control the information, but he just opened for the stream, uh, was her uh, height. And then uh, he told me that. Uh, okay, so it's coming through me then, uh, these things. Uh, yes, he said this kind of uh, channeling, he called it. And uh, okay, but no, I, w I want to test you, I said. Uh, um, and uh, before I will, uh, more, I, will, I will describe my house uh, to, 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 to Bob and, uh, and Bruce now. And uh, my house is a big white house, and in the middle it's a it's a quite big uh, blue uh, double door. Uh, so I, I uh, in my mind, uh, picture myself standing in front of my house and visualize my house, which is, as I said, uh, white uh, walls and a blue door. And I think he was on holiday in the Canary Islands uh, when I spoke to him on the phone then. And uh, I said, well, um, I was impressed by uh, you can tell me the height of this lady. Can you also tell me the color of my house? And then he became silent for some seconds. And he, then he said, well, I see something white. And then I see something blue, he said. <laughs> and uh, it was, to me, quite impressive because, you know, it's not a typical, uh, uh, that is not known. Uh, a blue door is, is very uncommon here in this town. The typical town, uh, say, traditional, is green in our town. That you have. Uh, so, so it was kind of special that he was able to pick up uh, this blue color, really. So after having demonstrated his ability to, to tell the hate of the lady and also just on command deliver those colors, you know, I, mm -hmm. I was quite impressed. And I think I must find out more about this. And then I started reading stuff. But right now we must find out more about some uh, making some money here on this particular program on 21st Century Radio with our two guests tonight, Dr. Terry A. Simonson and Dr. Bruce Solheim on 21st Century Radio.
know what I was surprised to learn when studying the Statue of Liberty? That liberty for real women is the key to humanity's survival on this planet, truly. And also that Lady Liberty has Native American roots and that America has reverence for the female half of divinity or the goddess at its very foundation. Powerful women and role models for balance are all part of our new book, The Secret Life of Lady Liberty, Goddess in the New World. It's a new way to understand America's history and future. Buy your copy today at Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble or from our website, SecretLifeOfLadyLiberty.com. That's SecretLifeOfLadyLiberty.com, just chock full of all new reasons to love the United States of America. Hello, this is Stanley Krippner. I'm professor of psychology at Saybrook Graduate School in San Francisco on behalf of 21st Century Radio, run by Dr. Bob Hieronymus. And I would certainly encourage listeners to stay tuned because you will hear things on 21st Century Radio that you'll hear nowhere else on the airwaves. Yes, thank you, Dr. Krippner. Our guests, we have two of them tonight, Dr. Terry A. Simonson and Dr. Bruce Solheim. We are reviewing the new book by Terry A. Simonson called Our Secret Powers, Telepathy, Clairvoyance, and Precognition, A Short History of Nearly Everything, Paranormal, Parry Publishing, and available on Amazon. Search Facebook for Our Secret Powers or visit Dr. Solheim's website, www.bruceolavsolheim.com to make sure you got that spelled right. Bruce Olav Solheim for more scientific research into his the paranormal and his books. Okay, now, what use can the paranormal have in our daily life, Sergei Terrier? Uh, well, I think it can be very useful because it is really our extended consciousness. And I think uh, as persons, you know, when, when you expand your consciousness, uh, you perceive uh, yourself better, you perceive other people better, you perceive the interactions better, and also you perceive nature. Uh, you know, all the indigenous people around the world, they are close uh, uh, relationship with nature is part of this kind of... Uh, extended consciousness as, as I see it. So it can benefit you on some, so many levels. And in practical, uh, I would say, who do you want to hang out with? Which people are destructive for, for your personal development and which are beneficial? And uh, also if you are apply for a job, for instance, you get uh, these vibes uh, about is this a good place to be and, and, and such things. Uh, uh, you know, from my <laughs> wake up in the morning, you know, all through the day, I, I try to listen to those vibes because I feel they there is some kind of guidance in, in that that is very beneficial and helpful when it, it's not possible to say um, have a, a, a overview with uh, your intellect. Uh, I, I am a great uh, believer in intellect also, of course, but um, uh, some cases it's not possible to, to know with your intellect, but your intuition will very often tell you. And, and uh, then you have to, to, say, train and tune into your intuition. And uh, the paranormal, is, uh, as such, can really add quality to your life. It's more or less long, like coming home when you start to use those abilities. Bruce, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, well, I would very much agree with uh, with what Terry has said. And uh, I would say, you know, I, I uh, because I have uh, mediumship uh, abilities, I'm able to help people uh, to reach their their loved ones, and uh, you know, for friends and family and whoever asks me, actually, uh, and and it's it, it you really understand how humbling this this you know gift that we have. It all of us have it. It's just some people maybe have a little more than others. I like to compare it to uh, a baseball analogy where. Uh, Everybody can probably throw a ball, but some people can throw it over 90 miles an hour. So that that's kind of the, the way I look at it, for whatever reason. And it's helpful to people, and it's it's a humbling experience. It's you're a you're a bridge between their loved ones and and them, and the messages get passed. And so I, I look at it as a as a big a big you know as a very humbling experience. And 
and for all the other reasons that that Terry has said, it can help you in your your daily life having a uh, tuned in intuition with what's going on, and 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 of course, folks in the spirit world can help us in our everyday lives because they they do not lie. <laughs> do, do folks in the spirit world really want to help us? Yes, yes, they do. Especially those and, and, that may have passed on from your own family, like your husband or or something, yes, something I, like I, that. Yes, especially your your loved ones and friends. Those are the 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 ones that I've. Uh, I've felt have given me the the best guidance. Although I've talked to uh, you know other people have asked me, hey, will you connect with my uh, somebody that I don't know, their father or their grandfather, and and they often have very interesting things to say. And and uh, as far as I know, they never say anything untrue. Now the the thing is, you have to be careful, you know, what who you connect with. That's uh, and and when you're connecting, you know, it's just as important to learn how to turn all this off as it is to learn how to turn it on as as a uh, a psychic medium or oh. as a person who really tunes into this. So, By the way, how do you turn it off? How do you turn it off? Yeah. Uh, I, I ask for, I, I have some helpers, uh, spirit guides that help me uh, and that I've had with me for a very long time. One's very kind of a, a I, I look at him kind of like a, he's a warrior type. He's like a bouncer. And the other one is a, a very angelic kind of uh, female mm-hmm. uh, entity. And they they protect me and they help me and I ask for their help when I make connections and uh, they kind of are gatekeepers to make sure that the the more negative things stay stay away. Now does... and uh, and then when I'm ready to turn it off, I just ask them to help me. And sometimes I'll actually picture it. I'll say it out loud. Okay, I'm ready to turn it off. I need to get to sleep. I need to do something else. I need to go dig a hole out in the yard. You know, I need to be grounded. Uh, so, so that, and it also it helps that that my wife Ginger is very grounded, and it's not that she doesn't believe in any of this, but she's she's a very uh, earthy, grounded person, and she helps me a lot. <laughs> well, that's that's of tremendous importance, I'll tell you. <laughs> it is. It's I really think, important. It really is. Important. Yeah, I have yeah. I have that same great great fortune. Terry, do you have that great fortune too? Well, uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm open to what the Bruce is uh, saying, but you know, my, my uh, uh, I am uh, even more humble than Bruce. You know, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I feel somehow it has been a, a process where I have started to develop, say, what I call just intuition, to make it simple, more and more. So, uh, and I uh, have. Um, uh, I speak with uh, regularly with psychics that. Uh, have that kind of um, uh, spiritual guides that Bruce is uh, telling about. So I'm very open to that. But I cannot say that I myself have that connection with my guides that I can describe them as persons. I have had uh, haunches uh, that I feel come from, say, another uh, uh, realm. Uh, but I cannot, uh, say, describe the, the character of those who, who give me uh, those or that who gives this uh, information to me? Uh, can I add something to? Because I think Terry is being very humble. He's it's a very it's a Norwegian trait, and uh, he's he's being okay. he's he has a great deal of humility there. He's come up with some brilliant ideas in his book, uh, and and you know this idea of the uh, uh, of the psychic world or the paranormal world being like the the internet, which I just I, you know this is something he's tapping into. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I think that you know, it's it's absolutely brilliant concept that that I think everybody would understand who's familiar with any kind of technology that we have today. Yeah, especially the concept that he has in the book, mental internet. Mental internet, mental yeah, internet, exactly. Really That's... fascinating. Well, let's get the the master to tell us about my this. humble friend. Yeah, my <laughs> humble friend. There you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, I, my, my, my perception was that uh, th- these things are working. As I said, uh, when I was going to this date with this guy who was able to tell me that uh, the lady was one meter and 64 tall, uh, it was kind of, I don't remember if it was myself that uh, worded it that way, or he somehow that uh, used the metaphor of curse. But, uh, but uh, what uh, the takeaway was that, ah, uh, this is working like internet, where you have a search engine, and uh, you search for something, and you get the information. And uh, and you also can send messages and receive messages. That's a kind of telepathy, you know, when you send an email or get uh, get an email, that's receiving and sending telepathy. And uh, if you're clairvoyant and you can tell where the neighbor's cat disappeared, for instance, uh, 
then it's a download information uh, you're downloading. So it, 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 uh, it somehow struck me as a very, very useful metaphor describing those uh, most basic phenomena of the paranormal kind. Also, I must say, because I, as I said, I was uh, raised in a kind of a Bible belt in Norway and went to this Christian youth club where I was great people and a great milieu. But there was little tendency to say that if you experience something kind of special, it had to be either directly from God or directly from the devil, you know. Oh, and I think that uh, polarization is unhealthy awesome. because uh, for me... Uh, um, it's more like uh, a kind of extended psychology. And uh, that would be the kind of uh, Christian mysticism uh, way of looking at it. And also the Buddhist tradition uh, where they say everybody has potentially the Buddha, uh, the Buddha consciousness. So if there happens something, if you, for instance, uh, um, uh, experience at, uh, telepathy, for instance, it does not need that is uh, either God or the devil sending you these telepathy thoughts, you know, that is kind of, uh, as I said, too much uh, polarization. But if you use the a neutral metaphor of the Internet, ah, we use that every day. We know how that works. We have an intention about sending a message or we have an intention about receiving something or a, a intention about finding information. We go to the Internet and just... Uh, as we can do that, we can also use uh, what I think uh, of the, as the collective consciousness as a mental internet to, to send messages, uh, receive messages, and also receive information. Uh, but then you have to fine tune your in intuition. And then uh, to, to elaborate on the metaphor, the intuition will be the search engine. If you have a really good search engine, like a uh, mental Google, you can find lots of information, and that would be a professional psychic being able to do that. But uh, uh, some people are staying with a kind of uh, old-fashioned Alta Vista or something, you know, and it, it's very slow and does not sort the information very well either. So, uh, as I said, uh, and thank you for uh, complimenting that uh, metaphor, Bruce. Uh, I think I find it's a very helpful metaphor uh, because when people start, uh, start talking about collective consciousness, okay, yeah, sounds good, but what is it and how does it work? Well, it works like an internet and, and ah, it's uh, so, say, clarifying uh, and a bit demystifying. Also, uh, I will not say that has nothing to do that, of course, there the, um, might very well be spiritual beings. Uh, uh, did, when we go into the kind of uh, esoteric traditions, they will say that uh, the, say, angels or uh, yeah, spirits uh, communicate through the, uh, what is called astral plan, uh, astral plane, you know. Uh, so so uh, it is also possible to, to somehow be open to the spiritual uh, uh, say uh, beings communicating through this mental internet, but basically it's a metaphor to to show how say how common these phenomena are, uh, how very much integrated is part of our daily life. If we only started to to listen and to to, to use uh, use it, yes. Well, I've got to listen to what goes on uh, in in the mystical world out there today. We've got to take another break at this time uh, at this particular time, and when we come back. Uh, I'm going to ask the question, what is the difference between parapsychology and occultism? Now, this, this is, I've been waiting to ask this question for quite a while. We'll be back with our two guests, Terry A. Simonson and Bruce Solheim. Hello, this is Ingo Swan, the author of Penetration, The Question of Extraterrestrial and Human Telepathy. And you're listening to the wonderful 21st Century Radio with the amazing Dr. Bob Hieronymus. Oh, there's our dear brother. Good to hear from him again. We have two guests today, tonight. Doctors Terry A. Simonson and Bruce Solheim. The book that we're reviewing is Our Secret Powers, Telepathy, Clairvoyance, and Precognition, A Short History of Nearly Everything Paranormal, Parry Publishing, and available on Amazon. Okay, here's the big question for $150,000. You guys ready? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see if we can. Bring it on. Are, are you guys, all right. You guys sitting up straight? Yeah. I straight ahead, no talking, no gum in the mouth. I am now. Okay. I'm now. <laughs> All right, here goes. Here goes. What is the difference between parapsychology 
and occultism. Terry, take it away. Well, I would say it's uh, the uh, approach, uh, because uh, the occultism uh, is the traditional uh, approach when you use the meditation, invocation, prayer, and so. Uh, when parapsychology tried to study many of the same phenomena in the lab with scientific methods. So I would say perhaps that is the, uh, the, the basic uh, difference. Uh, the occult... Uh, uh, which I must uh, stress to say, uh, because um, my Christian background here, uh, occult has nothing to do with something evil, magic, or black thing. So it is just about the hidden things in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, occult, uh, occultism would deal uh, with, uh, say, the existential dimension, uh, but uh, parapsychology will deal with the scientific dimension. Well, good going there. Okay. What's your what's your uh, version of this, Bruce? Did I win the hundred and fifty thousand? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 well, boy, I, I, I mean, he has such an excellent book, and he explains all of these things. But the only thing I would add to what uh, the excellent uh, uh, definitions that uh, that Terry gave were, and I'm going to use a baseball analogy. Sorry, sorry, Terry, you're probably not familiar with. Well, maybe you are familiar with American baseball, but there, I have there, there's softball here in in my town. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. In the southern part of Norway, they are playing baseball and softball. I remember hearing about that or reading about it. But I, the, the, there's a tradition in baseball. There's an old scouting tradition. You know, the old-time scouts had a feel for somebody. They had hunches. They had uh, kind of they, they had a belief system. They had rituals. They had traditions. You know, superstitions, and they they went with that with their scouting reports. They also used statistics as well. But it was more the old-fashioned way. Was more that. That you know what I would compare almost to uh, uh, occultism in this case, and parapsychology, the scientific uh, research methodology, is more like the saber metrics, all the statistical uh, reports that they have now on every single aspect of the game, just an in incredible level of detail up to the like the spin velocities and stuff of a pitcher and oh, yeah. and, uh, and and launch angles and all this stuff. So that's that's more of the modern take. That, that is the research scientific methodology. And then the old time scouts just went by their gut. Some of them, like the the, the movie uh, oh, with Clint Eastwood, um, uh, Trouble with the Curve. He he was losing his eyesight, but he could hear, it, you know, how the ball was being hit, Whoa. and he could tell whether that guy was a good hitter or not. Those are, I, I would say that 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 seems to be kind of the difference to me. You know, that you got rituals, beliefs, traditions. It's it's what uh, mm. actually the. Uh, Terry and I have a have a common friend. That's how we actually met. Was Doctor Dean Raiden? Yay, uh, Dean Raiden, who was just with us a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that's how Terry and I met. But anyway, he talks in his in his book, Real Magic. He he talks about the, you know, this idea that what he's been studying really is magic. So I think there's a lot of crossover, and if mm. we try to build a wall between them, I think we're probably you know, it's kind of self-defeating, and we have to, like, l learn from each other, just like that you need both kinds of scouting in baseball. So th mm -hmm. that would be my analogy, I, I would make, just to add to the excellent uh, definitions that uh, Terry gave. Well, I guess you both are going to have to, you both are going to have to split the $150,000. All right. Uh, well, and and we'll, send it, we'll send it along with a couple of other books, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, our paranormal ability, that is, the ability to receive and send telepathy, a common thing? Who'd like yeah. to take that one first? Terry? Uh, yeah, I, I, can, uh, I can start and Bruce can fill in or add yep. or whatever. If yeah. like. uh, yes, it's very much common. As I, I, I think in... Uh, I, I, and I would uh, compare with Facebook. Uh, if you're online on Facebook, you're online on Facebook. And then you can go and check and uh, everybody. It's not magic. It's, uh, it's somehow uh, our basic consciousness is online all the time. Uh, it, it's, uh, say, uh, I, uh, as I said, sometimes uh, discuss these things with a very good professional psychic here in Norway, and, and she said it's the most simple of everything, really. It's, uh, the, you know, the intellect can be quite complex, uh, complicated, and complicating also, but this is, say, the basic level of consciousness, uh, but therefore you should be, say, silent uh, to, to contact it, and, and uh, you, you should be say, uh, quiet, uh, and um, yeah, it's somehow, it's, uh, when you're born, it's the kind of, uh, before you start uh, 
putting labels and names on things. Uh, uh, children are very open to those vibes from this, uh, say, called the mental internet, uh, because they don't disturb and complicate things. They are some of them direct uh, online uh, all the time. So it's just, uh, say, getting back to, to your basic consciousness via uh, forest walks or meditation or a good night's sleep and so, and, and, and everybody will... Uh, will be able to, more or less. Uh, I can uh, extend the analogy with the, the music analogy, as I uh, often use, um, uh, because everybody can l learn to sing the, in their own show or to, for their own entertainment, but uh, not everybody should sing opera or, uh, at the stage, you know. So it's kind of, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's a basic ability, but uh, people are differently gifted. Well, uh, do you I, have anything to add there, Bruce? Well, that, I think, no, I, I, I agree with him. There's, there's natural gifts, you know, and I think everybody does have it. But I think, uh, and, we, and Terry and I have talked about this, in the, in the more tucked away parts of the world, the less busy parts of the world, like certain parts of Norway where my parents are from, people are a lot closer to these uh, more basic consciousness, you know, and, 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 and don't take it for granted. Don't overlook the, uh, you know, the, whether it's, you know, ghosts or apparitional experiences or their intuition they they're very much closer to it well we in the modern industrialized you know it's sections where it's uh, cities urban areas where we're so busy with our life and we, we kind of ignore it and we don't cultivate those mm -hmm. talents so yes everybody does have those talents and uh, we, we all have it and and sometimes we don't know what we're calling it we have a gut feeling you know that's we feel like somebody's staring at us you know all these things are paranormal uh, they're actually very normal, not so much paranormal, but be because of the way we look at it, we th we think that it's mm. it's strange. But I, you know, when I was in Austria, in the Alps in Austria, and and had a apparitional experience, everybody, you know, I, I was, you know, I thought it was pretty remarkable, and nobody around me thought it was remarkable. Any of the people that lived there, including the village priest, you know, so it's just a very common thing you know for them mm -hmm. <laughs> whereas uh in the big cities it, it probably wouldn't be and i i think the the curious thing the really wonderful thing about all this is that the paranormal ties in every culture everywhere around the world and you see that really in terry's book how he he covers you know the length and breadth of this world and and um, all these different um you know he, he talks about so many different areas and it's really something that ties all of us together and and and, I, and maybe that could be something that could help us get along better in in the long run. That's that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Anything to add there, Saye Terai Taye? Oh, I'm just uh, agree with everything Bruce says here. So uh, we are we are. Uh, oh, so am I. <laughs> very <laughs> But uh, what I could say, uh, what I can say, uh, for instance, if you go to Norway, then the Sami people uh, living in the north of Norway, the Norwegian indigenous uh, people, uh, they have a very strong um, tradition for this because they are the traditional lifestyle of the Sami is being out, you know, on uh, with the reindeer and uh, and the snow and uh, in the fields and everything, and it's very silent. And uh, I suppose that's part of uh, they are traditionally at least uh, have been very good listeners, uh, and uh, there's a very very strong tradition for for these phenomena. I write a bit about that also in my, my book. And if you go to say Australia, the Aborigines. Uh, uh, in the Australian desert, you know, there's also a very strong tradition for, say, visiting the, the dream time, as they call it, you know, when you're tuning into this uh, collective field of consciousness. And uh, so, so uh, the, the indigenous people, because of their more quiet lifestyle, is uh, in general, uh, I think, more open to, to this uh, they common abilities. And, and also, as Bruce said, my vision is also that somehow if we get more conscious about these things is is really something that uh, that you uh, bind people together uh, across uh, nations and uh, yes so so quietness and silence are an aid to this process yes uh, definitely so and if you say just uh, uh, in the american tradition from the 60s uh, of course, the transcendental meditation uh, movement was very strong. Maharishi, Mahas Yogi, uh, with the Beatles, and these days the famous uh, uh, film, uh, what is called uh, film guy, uh, David Lynch. Uh, he oh, yes. and also yeah, uh, he's uh, much into transcendental meditation, and uh, they have even uh, courses for developing. Uh, they call it Siddhi courses, and uh, mm -hmm. Siddhi is the old Indian name for paranormal abilities, and. 
I will not vouch for the causes of themselves, but you know the idea that it's possible through uh, through uh, systematic meditation to develop these abilities. Uh, I, that uh, idea I share uh, totally. Mm. So yeah, I know Terry writes about that, and so did our, our friend Dean Radin in his uh, the book before last, Supernormal. Supernormal. He, that was his big his big focus was the the cities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is uh, uh, right in that book. He 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 starts with um, uh, it's an old Indian philosopher called Patanjali who's written some yoga mm -hmm. sutras. And that means uh, say sentences uh, uh, and how to develop the different uh, to remember uh, past uh, events uh, that you are not experienced yourself, but you come to a place and can read the place, what happened here a hundred years ago and like that, and also uh, to tell the future and to see what's going on in other places and uh, to read other people's minds, all the kind of paranormal abilities, telepathy, clairvoyance, uh, precognition, and see postcognition and all these kind of things. And uh, those old Indian sutras uh, tell about how to develop that, and that was the basis for uh, the former book uh, from, from the Well, we're coming up upon our final break of this hour, and um, I just wanted to mention, of course, the name of the book and everything before we leave you this, at this time, and you'll be returning next hour, of course, Our Secret Powers, Telepathy, Clairvoyance, and Precognition, A Short History of Nearly Everything Paranormal, Parry Publishing, and available on Amazon. Search Facebook for Our Secret Powers, or visit Dr. Solheim's website, www. Bruce O L A V Solheim is 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 S O L H E I M dot com, and here comes my favoriteest music in the world. Stay connected with stimulating talk and breaking news on Talk Radio six eighty W.